craft beer reviews, brewing questions, past episodes of Brew Few and Brewing Today can all be found at beerloons.com, the site for brewing information on the internet. Hi everyone, I am your host Mike Campbell and welcome to Brewing Today. Today we are continuing our series of off or unusual flavors in beer. On today's show I'm going to discuss a sherry-like flavor in a beer. This flavor is commonly caused by oxidation of the beer. We'll experience the flavor, talk about the causes, and if anything can be done once you have this flavor. If you're paying attention, I know I said I was going to talk about astringency last week, but it turns out the grape tannin I thought I had at home is nowhere to be found. So we'll tackle astringency next week. But this week, like I say, we're talking about sherry-like flavor. So let's get back to that flavor in beer. To get this flavor, which everyone can do at home, and I hope you are participating in this because you will get a pretty good education or understanding of different flavors or off flavors in a beer, um, and to get this in particular flavor, uh, well, we'll start with the basic. Take about three quarter teaspoon of sherry, and I'll be honest, I would only add it to about um, about four or five ounces of beer. Uh, I did it to a full twelve ounce Bud Select fifty five, you know. Um, and quite honestly, the sherry like flavor really wasn't there. Uh, it was very very hard to pick out. So um, on a twelve ounce beer, I did. Well, about two teaspoons worth. So I think most of these directions are written for a four or five ounce sample, so you're not having to kind of kill a whole thing of beer. It's probably designed where about three people could use one, uh, we'll say Bud Select 55 uh, beer. So we're going to start cutting it down closer to four ounces because I know sometimes it's been difficult to pick out these flavors. Um, so anyway... Uh, like I say, about two teaspoons if you want to do a full 12 ounce beer. Otherwise, uh, three quarter teaspoon for about four ounces would suffice. And you can use Coors Light, Bud Light, whatever. It doesn't really matter. I'm just using Select 55 because it's the lightest calories out there and I am losing weight. All right. So we got it. And take a sniff first. See if you can't pick out that wonderful sherry, sherry smell. Now, it's recommended to use dry sherry. I'll, I'll be honest, I don't have any, and I'm not going to buy any because uh, sherry and myself are not friends. So I use cooking sherry, <laughs> which I know is wonderful. But, hey, it gets the job done. So uh, you got that kind of cardboardy, kind of weird fruity smell thing going because that's what you should get. So let's go ahead and taste this as well. Mmm. Taste that kind of off-flavored raisin prune flavor uh, in the beer. Um, this is one you can definitely tell by smell and then can also pick up in flavor as well. Uh, so I'm sure all of you wish that all your beers could taste like this. This is mm, fantastic. Mm. All right. Obviously, this is not a flavor beer should taste like. Most people associate a sherry-like flavor with an oxidized beer or an old beer, which is kind of one and the same. But uh, an oxidized beer can happen from pouring, uh, poor sealing caps, too much oxygen being introduced prior to yeast pitching, too much oxidation coming in contact, or oxygen, sorry, coming in contact with the beer over time. Basically, none of these scenarios is great for beer. Once a beer gets this flavor, you are pretty much out of luck on making it better. Uh, if you can stomach, stomach it, then drink the beer. Otherwise, dump it. Life is too short for bad beer. On the note of bad beer, we had a poll question up on our website the last week or so, asking what people thought of the new Bud Light Platinum. And we'll just say the results are not encouraging. We got many responses, which is very, very cool. But the winner was uh, Nostradamus, the Aztecs, and the Mayans were right. The world is ending in 2012. Don't forget to check out our new poll question each week at beerloons.com. Typically, I'll put it up uh, the day that I record the show, which is either Thursday or Friday. So check back every Friday. The new poll question should be up. Really love getting your responses because it, it's a lot of fun. This one definitely got the most. This is something I've been running for about six, uh, six to eight weeks now, and 
Uh, we've been getting okay response, but uh, we're definitely getting better. So we're just going to post fun little things, maybe some serious things here and there. Uh, one other thing with uh, BeerLoons.com, uh, we're going to have a relatively um, major announcement probably sometime next week, thinking toward the end of the week. So check out uh, our site for that as well. Exciting news coming up, uh, <laughs> we certainly hope. So anyway, back to uh, the sherry-like flavor in the beer. Uh, you do want a fair amount of oxygen in your beer for proper fermentation. But don't go overboard. So this, of course, is for the uh, home brewers here. Um, I'm also not a huge fan of anything that causes the wort to rain down into your fermenter. A steady stream is okay, but not little droplets. That's a concern of mine. Uh, the reason for this thinking is uh, the droplet for the wort has much more surface area come in contact with oxygen than when the wort stays in a stream. I use a beer loons mash paddle when cooling my wort, and that works great for aeration as well. Uh, but you could also use an oxygen injection system, pouring the beer from one container to another, or a spoon or paddle where you agitate the wort. But like I say, I use uh, my paddle for about 10 minutes while the wort is cooling. works very well. It speeds up the cooling process, but at the same time, I get uh, really nice aeration uh, in the wort itself. And I don't really have an oxygen uh, or oxidation problem. In fact, I've never had one. Uh, so some beer styles will age better than others because remember age can be another thing that causes the oxidation, uh, just a contact with air over long periods of time. So storing basically like a Bud Light for two years is not going to make a better beer, probably will cause oxidation. However, an Imperial Stout, a Barley Wine, or Belgian Triple need the air age time and will hold up just fine. There's several other styles as well, but uh, those just were some examples. Generally speaking, a beer with very dark grains, which would carry with it a fair amount of flavor, or a lot of alcohol will hold up and improve as it ages over the years. Think of it like a fine wine. The longer it ages, um, the better the flavor will be. And you're essentially looking for a little bit of oxidation in some of these beers, as you would be in some of the wines. Very small amounts, but you do want some. That's what's actually aging the beer for you. Um... For me personally, I've had beers up to five years old, and the flavor was really fantastic, um, and the flavor really could have only been achieved by a long aging process. There was one beer I had that I believe was closer to 10 years old uh, that I had bought from a liquor store uh, in Minnesota here in Burnsville. A uh, large one starts with the name Blue, ends with the name Max. Some of you may be familiar with it if you're in the Minnesota area. Um, they have a line, and I forget the brewery and all the, the deal with it, but they have several bottles from every year they've produced this beer for, I don't know, back then. I mean, this was years ago. They probably had 20 years worth of this beer, so kind of neat to try something different. Now, I do say, if I remember right, they do wax the top of the bottle, which helps with the aging process, doesn't allow nearly as much oxygen uh, to come in contact with the beer over time. So one other valuable point here is remember when you are storing a beer to keep it in a cool spot that is below 55 degrees Fahrenheit and is consistent in temperature. Don't place it in an area where it gets direct sunlight. Frankly, the less light, the better, um, or has temperature swings. We don't want wild temperature swings. A uh, few degrees, you know, plus or minus five, maybe a little bit more than that is fine, but not 15 to 20 degrees. Uh, you and your beers will simply thank you for the extra effort. It's no different than storing wine. You don't necessarily have to store the bottles on their side. You do that with a wine bottle to help protect the cork over time so it doesn't uh, dry out and age and, and uh, shrink. But with uh, beer bottles with the cap, you typically don't have to do that. But you do want to keep it cool. That's what gonna help, what's going to help protect the beer over long periods of time. So I hope we've answered your questions on this topic, but if we haven't, then email me at mikec at beerloons.com with your questions. I will be happy to explain anything in further detail to you. We want this to be an interactive show with you. I do get a lot of conversation from folks stopping in the uh, homebrew shop that I work at. Uh, I do get emails on occasion. Feel free to send that along my way. Don't, don't worry about it. I'll be happy to read them, and if... Uh, I can, I'll respond with the best answer I can, or I'll make it a show. Uh, so don't be shy about emailing us, and certainly follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well, and always ask questions. That's going to do it for our show today, and don't forget about our craft beer reviews on the Brew For You show. Now short to five minutes or less, thank you for spending time with us this week, and until next time, cheers. <laughs>